Last year, I reviewed the HP Pavilion X360, a 14-inch convertible laptop that actually checked all the boxes on the budget level. That means if you were a student or somebody who was watching their wallet, it was a great choice and it was a very popular video on my channel, garnering over 300,000 views and still counting, people still watching that uh, quite a bit. Now, I couldn't wait to get the refresh here for 2020 into the studio. So when HP hit me up to check it out, I quickly jumped on it. Now, it's not the same fare as last year. In fact, there are a lot of improvements across the board. It now has a 10th generation processor. You're looking at slimmer bezels, although not the slimmest. And you also get something you don't normally see on a budget laptop. That's right, it has LTE and it's been working great and it's not something you normally see on a budget laptop. So I'm actually happy that it has LTE. There are a lot of other improvements. We're gonna get into that coming up now. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the HP Pavilion X360 with LTE, all new for 2020, coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. Make sure you follow me on social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. I'll post all the updates on those platforms. And today's video is brought to you by our new members who have contributed this month to help support the channel. If you're interested in becoming a new member, hit that join button below. And in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one is seeing this video before its release. This review unit is on loan from HP and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, right now, you can pick up the model with the optional LTE for $599 over at HP. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can buy it. And that, to me, is a really good deal, especially with that LTE. You don't normally see that at this price point. And with that out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Inside the box is a 45 watt power adapter that uses a barrel pin connector with an extension cord included. You get setup instructions with warranty information and they also included the pen. Now this is the new MPP 2.0 pen that charges via USB-C, which I like, and it also works really well. We'll get into that later on. Now holding the unit for the first time, everything seems pretty nice and premium, although the bottom is plastic, everything else seems to be metal. It also has a pretty nice size to it, not the lightest, certainly not the heaviest 2-in-1 convertible in this 14-inch category. Now as far as ports are concerned, we'll start off on the left side, where you get one USB Type-A port and a 3.5mm audio jack. Moving over to the right side, you get your SIM slot for the optional LTE. It pops out, it's spring-loaded, I like that. A full-size SD card reader, USB-C port that does data charge and display out. It's not Thunderbolt 3. A second USB-A port, an HDMI 2.0 port, and your power port to charge this device. Now, this could also be charged via USB-C, for those wondering. Now, HP has stated they don't really want you going inside this laptop, but you can open it up, and there are two RAM slots for you to upgrade the RAM, so that's good. And the SSD is also upgradable, as well as the Wi-Fi card. Now, my unit has Wi-Fi 6, but there are other configurations that have Wi-Fi 5. So when you're checking out, make sure you check the right one. If you want Wi-Fi 6, which is, of course, more future-proof, go with that. And speaking of the SSD, here's how it did on the Crystal Disk Mark test. Now the big news here is the inclusion of the optional 4G LTE. You can go with that if you want to be free from the Wi-Fi. I like the option that this gives you, not something we normally see on a budget level 2-in-1. Now this is an unlocked modem. I'm using it with Verizon and working well, getting good download, upload speeds, as well as with Google Fi. That utilizes the T-Mobile network. AT&T should also work with this. I haven't tested Sprint or any other network, so check with your carrier before you buy. Now, when it comes to the display, there are three display options when it comes to brightness. There's an HD or 720p display that gets as bright as 220 nits. Then there's a full HD option that's 1920 by 1080, 250 nits. That's the one I have. And then there's one that gets even brighter at 400 nits. That's also a full HD option. Now, the one they sent me, as I mentioned, is the 250-nit option. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Now, when it comes to the brightness, I actually measured 272 nits, which is higher than the advertised 250 nits, which is good to see. But of course, I would have preferred anything over 300 nits on this model, but yet there is a 400-nit option if you do want a brighter display. Keep that in mind. 
you're looking at really deep black, some vibrant colors, good contrast, and it also has good color accuracy with a Delta E score of 2.30, and it also covers the color gamut somewhat well, 67% sRGB, 47% Adobe RGB, 47% of the P3 wide color gamut. Not the best when it comes to the color gamut, but at this price point, you can't really argue. This is a very nice display nonetheless. And they did manage to slim down the top and side bezels from last year's model, although you will notice the pronounced chin once again on this model. And one thing you'll note, it is a glossy display, which is reflective, so that is something to keep in mind, especially when you're working outdoors in direct sunlight, you will notice the glare and the reflections. Bottom line, I don't really have too many complaints on the display. I think they did a really good job. So this is the front-facing camera on the all-new HP Pavilion X360, a 14-inch budget convertible that actually uh, has some pretty good features with it, uh, including LTE option that you don't normally see at this price point. Uh, as far as the camera is concerned, it's a 720p, 30 frames per second camera. Uh, good for Skype, good for Zoom, uh, anything to do with video conferencing for your work for home needs uh, can be done with this. Not the best I've ever seen, certainly not the worst, but I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. And as I mentioned, HP sent over the HP rechargeable MPP 2.0 tilt pen, and it's a separate accessory, a separate purchase, and I think it's worth it if you like to take notes, sketch out artwork. It uses USB-C to charge, so you don't need to buy batteries, and it also is really good for taking notes, sketching out artwork. I think they did a really good job with this pen. And this being a two-in-one convertible, that means you could put it into different modes. You got tent mode. This is great for consuming media. Same goes for the stand mode. And of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode. And that's great for use with the pen. And just like most other two-in-one convertibles, you can't open the lid with one finger. You have to use two hands to open this up as it has really sturdy metal hinges. And when it comes to the keyboard, I think it was actually pretty good. I like the spacing between the keys. I thought the tactile feedback was good. It also had pretty decent key travel. Now my review unit doesn't have a backlit keyboard, but it is an option at checkout. You can get it with a backlit keyboard if you want. And it also has a persistent touchpad with a pretty decent size. Two finger scrolling was buttery smooth and all the Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised. I think they did a decent job with that touchpad. Now when it comes to performance, I think they did a decent job. Now the one that HP sent me has the Intel Core i5 103 5G1. That's a Intel Ice Lake processor with integrated UHD graphics. You can get it with a Core i3 or even the Core i7. If you get the Core i7, that will have the integrated Iris Plus graphics, which is gonna of course give you better graphics performance. But as far as the one they sent me, it actually performed okay. You could do things such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing pretty well. Video editing, not the best for that, but you you can definitely play some games if you lower the settings you can definitely get playable frame rates especially on some of the older titles but again this is not really a gaming laptop and i thought they did a pretty decent job when it comes to the cooling and thermals as you can see it does have a single fan and it never got overly hot even under heavy load and when it comes to the audio, well, it has Bang & Olufsen speakers, what I think were pretty good. They have a reasonable amount of bass, decent volume, not too bad for a budget laptop in this category. Now, when it comes to the battery, it has a 43 watt hour battery and it did seven hours and two minutes on my continuous web surfing test, which is not too bad for a budget category laptop. And if you do need to plug in, they do supply you with a 45 watt power adapter. It's pretty compact and it took less than two hours to give you a full charge, which is pretty good. Okay, let's bring it all home. Can I recommend the HP Pavilion X360 with LTE here for 2020? And the answer is an absolute yes. I think they did a really great job with this budget laptop. I like the fact that it has a nice 14 inch full HD multi-touch display, good build quality, nice keyboard and precision touchpad. 10 generation processors are present here. It supports MPP 2.0 tilt pen. I like that. And it also has good thermals, an affordable price, and it also supports USB charging, has a nice array of ports, and and the RAM is dual channel if you put an extra RAM stick in there and the SSD is user upgradable. I like the fact that you can do it, although be careful opening up this laptop. It's not the easiest, but once inside, there is a lot of things you can upgrade. And of course, it has that optional LTE. Negatives here, it has got a thick bottom bezel on the display that might bother some people. And the color gamut coverage could be better and it could be brighter on the 250 nit model, although there is a 400 nit model available. No real deal breakers here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna give this a score of 88%, making the HP Pavilion X360 with LTE worth your money.
So what do you think about this bad boy? The HP Pavilion X360, this 14 inch convertible actually is really impressive. Now the big thing here this year of course is the inclusion of the optional LTE and this is the unit that HP sent me and I really like this. I like where they're going with this, giving you that freedom of LTE, uh, not being tied to Wi-Fi all the time. So if you're in a coffee shop, once this pandemic is over, you can bring this with you to go and you don't have to uh, worry about security. You don't have to worry about uh, somebody getting into your laptop. It'll be a lot more secure with the LTE in this. And that, I'm really impressed with that. Now it's got pretty good battery life, although not the best battery life, but it actually performed pretty well, giving you most of the day in terms of the charge. Uh, build quality is really good. It's mostly metal, although the bottom is plastic, but it really is a nice design as far as everything goes, as far as the keyboard is concerned. Now you can get this with a backlit keyboard but the unit that I have does not have the backlight on the keyboard so keep that in mind but it is an option on HP's website now as far as the display it's a 14 inch display actually pretty nice about 250 nits but I actually got a little bit higher about 272 on my measurements and that's actually pretty good for this uh, category for this price point and it actually performed really well good viewing angles good nice deep blacks it doesn't cover the color gamut perfectly, but again, at less than $600 or around $600, you really can't fault them too much. This is a really nice choice for a student, somebody on a budget, uh, especially who wants LTE, this might be your ticket. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.